And recording is on. Yeah. So welcome to the Monday, fifteenth of March, twenty twenty one, the Excel Business Call. Um, for today's agenda, we have uh, new member introductions, um, a proposal to participate in the DGov uh, pool created by PrimeDAO. Um, a discussion about uh, DXDAO ETH 2.0 staking, um, updates on Luna Social and that collaboration that's happening, and then an update on maybe the Opolis um, possible DX Ventures investment. Um, I don't think we have anyone new here, right? I'm going over the names. Yeah, everybody is a sort of a member. Um, so yeah, I guess we can start with uh, the participation in the DGOV pool created by PrimeDAO. Um, I can repost the link here, which I posted, I think it was on Friday or Thursday on uh, on the Dix, uh, on the DixBiz channel. So this is the document. Um, basically, PrimeDAO want to create a, a curve, sorry, a curve, a balancer a pool of, uh, of DAO related tokens. Uh, this is actually an idea that I wanted to do when I was in DAO stack with, you know, take even, you know, Gen and, and Aragon uh, tokens and put them all into a pool and create some sort of like an index uh, of uh, DAOs. Um, and yeah, so this is something that Prime DAO are planning to do and they're planning to govern it from uh, the Prime DAO interface. Uh, if you scroll down, you see like um, basically the distribution and how much uh, each uh, DAO is going to put uh, into this pool. Um, and yeah, I think so. Like they made a calculation that uh, looks like uh, some sort of quadratic um, weight uh, for each token according to the market cap. Um, and yeah, just thoughts about this. Um, I think you know we should participate. We should uh, allocate some DXD for this, um, and yeah, I don't know. It's open for discussion. Yeah, I mean, I think just trying to like kind of a cool idea or trying to make something happen in some way. I think it's cool to see how different DAOs can uh, participate um, with it. So definitely be kind of into exploring further. I think it's interesting they use the quadratic percentage, which gives a little bit uh, more interest, like, uh, I guess, shakes things up a little bit, discounts the the larger players. Um, I'm interested in what, like, the governance of this or kind of, like, the point, not the, I guess, like, well, what's the long-term play, too? Like, you give, the, you give the tokens to this pool, presumably, I guess it's governed by all the DAOs and some manner or fashion and then it just kind of sits there um or yeah what's the end game so, so the so, so the a five um a five asset balancer pool is like is the idea to basically create a an ability for so, some random person to like invest in five DAOs all at once very easily or because I could see like that being a set protocol product. So in Balancer, by providing liquidity, you basically get exposure to those five assets. So you, if you want to be long those five assets, you would put in liquidity into the Balancer pool. And, and, and it also creates a, an ecosystem where those tokens start to trade against each other, right? Because they're all in a pool together. So it becomes a liquidity source, like competes actually with Swapper for DXD, but it actually could give liquidity between DXD and those four other tokens in a, in a smooth way. And if that pool becomes very big, it becomes, a, a, it links DXD to those tokens. And some of those tokens like BAL and, and a couple of the other ones are pretty popular, right? So it's a unique, like there's not many, balancer pools that I've seen that like have this goal. I don't know if, if pe people are aware of other ones, but it becomes this investment asset and it creates a linkage between those five assets. Is that, is that correct? Or am I like, am I off? Yeah, I, I think, I think that's basically correct. I would say that if it's, 
if it was only investment, then probably something like set protocol or indexed uh, would fit better here. But mm -hmm. I think this is also, um, yeah, also for, for the swap and for the liquidity between these assets. Um, and yeah, I guess this, this is kind of competing with uh, Swapper, uh, but yeah, I think like the, the overall kind of, th there is upside here with just, you know, just the marketing value of doing something with the rest of these DAOs and creating some sort of like a DAO alliance of some, of some sort. It's, I mean, it's just great because it's, yeah, supporting the other ones as well. Um, yeah, and I think they mentioned here that it's sort of biased towards smaller DAOs um, with this quadratic formula, as you mentioned, Chris. Um, so yeah, that's that as well. Um, yeah, and, and I think like in the future, um, I'm, I'm just reading off from like the end here. Um, so like they want to, they want to have the ability to add more DAOs as they come to the ecosystem. Um, they're thinking of creating like a stable coin out of this uh, balancer pool, right? So you could theoretically take this balancer pool LP token and put that into maker, like if, whatever, if we convince them, um, and then, you know, mint a stable coin that's sort of, um, you know, backed by all these DAOs. Um, yeah, there's an, uh, uh, another thing here about uh, decentralized co-insurance that, you know, they can, uh, that we can use this for insurance um, and yeah, co-farming and general incentive alignment between these, uh, all these DAOs. Um, so, so my guess is like prime DAO is by far the smallest in there. We're the second smallest, right? If you, John saying maybe these aren't even all real DAOs, but like I, my guess is this is gonna benefit prime token like you you put some little guy in the bath in a in a pool with all these other more important guys it should benefit the smallest guy i would guess where the second smallest guy there's probably a benefit there maybe we need to break down exactly like what the positives and negatives of this are like okay it competes with swapper but it also links dxd to all these tokens it's it would be a good collaboration i think um but i don't yeah i don't know exactly what it yeah, we haven't really seen another example of this. I don't think, right? Yes, so there's no yeah. example of it. Yeah, go for it. Well, I think of this as a branding thing, right? So I think the best example of of something like this is the DPI, right? So the DeFi Pulse Index gets talked about kind of separately. It's just something that people look at as a number, like representing like the health or the progress of DeFi, right? <clears throat> and so I think that's like really valuable to be part of that because it carries its own kind of like brand awareness and, and like market potential. I So, I mean, in that sense, like doing something like that could be cool, but I'm, I don't, is this, is this it though? Like, uh, I mean, do we, like, do we want to be associated with these so-called DAOs? Like, I mean, which one of these even does on-chain governance? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering the same thing, like, um, it can raise us, but at the same time, it can drag us down if, if those around us are not up to standard. Um, and I think we, we definitely are the leader in terms of that on-chain governance. I do think the bow is in there so that the pool can earn bow rewards, which is a very smart, clever design. But I don't know if that has to do anything with balancers governance. From a DXD holder perspective, this is a positive thing. Okay, the the is are they our equals and are, are they doing what we're doing in terms of decentralization is a, is another question, but like in terms of a DXD holder and DXD price and getting more awareness of DXD and every time someone puts money into this or uses this, like it benefits DXD token, that is true. So if we care about that, that's a benefit at least. Yeah, and I think it's. I mean, it's sort of, uh, I mean, may, maybe for us it's obvious, but I, I'm hoping that, you know, for other people that will be using this, it will also be obvious that, you know, DXDAO is, is really the most decentralized in a way here. Um, and, you know, the rest of them, I, 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 I guess Prime is the second most decentralized, right? Because the rest of them are using either Snapshot or, you know, it's like, like four voters or something like that. 
Um, yeah, except where where is Prime's treasury though? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's it's fair. In a, it's in a Cayman Island Foundation or whatever. Like, I don't know. I mean, I agree. Like, if we can provide, you know, participate in something that actually attracts liquidity and like incentivizes people to buy DXD, that's a positive thing. But I think uh, from the branding perspective here, like we're getting dragged down in this. Like I think it's a, a net negative. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. I think like just being associated with like API three or Gnosis or Balancer, it, it is a net positive, like in the branding aspect. I want the token price to be associated with their market caps, but I don't think they're examples of leading the way in governance. So I mean, I, I like being part of an index with those projects is is great, but I don't. But under the guise of decentralized governance, I'm not so sure. I think we're compromising ourselves a little bit there. Yeah, and I also like even if you're going to like say that they are like we're the best and they're like next but very far away. Like I think there's a whole bunch of other projects that could be kind of included in it. So I guess I don't understand like the brand like the DCOV brand in general, because I'm not sure if that, like what, yeah. So maybe there's a way to rebrand this as something else, because as I can see how like Gnosis, API3, Prime, DXDAO, there's some people that overlap, some of the people know, they're trying to like make something work and that makes sense, but could it be not like just decentralized governance? Because I'm not sure that's what is actually the similarity between those tokens. Yeah, I mean, interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of what else could come in here that's you know thriving to be decentralized, like in, in a decentralized governance way. Like house house token. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Is it's wow. governance of a DAO of DAOs? It's, it's I'd rather have more, house token than like twice. yeah, some like foundation controlled multi sig, right? Like at least it's on chain, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It'd be one thing if like it was just like oh these projects are collaborating, but it says like the DGov pool aims to support best patterns in blockchain governance by creating a methodology and creating a membership of decentralized governance practitioners like by supporting this pool we're saying this is the curated list of which we see our peers and frankly like i don't think these like projects are our peers when it comes to decentralized governance what if what if as part of that announcement they say that the other four are going to try to strive towards to to move towards what dxdao is leading i mean if we're going to do something like this we should be leading it and we should be setting standards and then and and like living up to that. Like, I understand what Prime Dow is trying to do, but I just think it's diluting the brand, if anything, without like, yeah. And everyone's a Dow now. I'm just wondering like who, who lets people into the balancer pool? Like who has that authority? Oh, I think anyone can, can provide tokens to the pool itself like um and then to change the aspects of that pool it's done mm -hmm. through prime dow like via proposal uh -huh. okay okay like if you want to add like another coin or something like that uh -huh. um so the interesting thing is they can theoretically create this without dx dow's permission right anyone can create a balancer pool so yeah. like we might end up in it whether or not we want to end up in it. But. Yeah, I mean people can put their DXC token wherever they want. It's permissionless. But there's but I don't think we should be underwriting or subsidizing or agreeing to something that like basically is misleading in terms of like what a DAO is and what decentralized governance is, like when we really should be defining that narrative. Um yeah, so I, I mean, on one hand, I agree, like that this is like where, yeah, this is, if if there's some spectrum of decentralization, then I think DXDAO is kind of like the max of that uh, spectrum. And like, 
I don't think anything else is really close. Like, I mean, snapshot. But, but there are things that are closer probably than than these guys. Um, like compound. Yeah, MakerDAO. Like, wait, like what? Compound. Well, let's create our own. Com compound is decentralized. This is like not not at all. I mean, at least the funds are on chain, right? Like, I mean, maybe the distribution is not decentralized, but I mean, we're not perfect there either, right? Like, I mean, that's like, I think you got to set some standards and like some bars and some goals, right? And like, we could do that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, uh, I'm wondering if, yeah, I mean, take Balancer out, right? Because Balancer is kind of, it's there to get Balancer rewards. Um, but API 3 seems to have, seems to be like, focusing on wanting to decentralize right uh same with gnosis um and yeah i guess the question everybody on, on wants to decentralize and everybody wants to brand themselves for as a DAO, and you know attempt to have those kind of legal veils or whatever but i mean until they actually ship it yeah just talk right and like it's, this is what we're stuck in we're stuck in like a sea of this garbage right where people are like abusing the term without even defining it, right? Like it's just hopping on this bandwagon of, oh, I'm a DAO, and we're a DAO, and this two-person multi-six a DAO, like, yeah, <laughs> it's saying, it's saying Gnosis DAO, and then like the circulating supply of Gnosis DAO is 212 million. Like, that's that's there's not 212 million dollars in Gnosis DAO, <laughs> right? Well, yeah. that's probably just in Gnosis. I mean, in GNO. Or something. There's a lot of other funds that Gnosis holds, um, but that are I think not. They've committed. Out. They've committed to doing it, but I think it's still in like a. I don't think it's anywhere on chain with any kind of token voting governance or any yeah. kind of governance. I, I do think, like, just as a aside on like governance, on chain governance in general. Like, I think John is right with the multi sig, like trying to move to decentralization that's like something we've seen a lot of and people are, are doing it right now but there is like like DeFi protocols will all have to be governed on chain by something right and that something will need to fund protocol development they will need to make decisions on upgrades and that's why you see like compound uniswap zero rex like the latest one who are all like actually building real on-chain governance systems that will eventually morph into something. And they're all having treasury management budget, like grants, a small component of it, but like eventually that will like grow into something. Um, it's just like a much different path than what we're taking, which is like kind of doing it from the beginning. Um, but like they're, they've got a lot of work to do, but I think that's like something you'll see over the next, uh, year or two when people talk about DAOs a lot more. Yeah, but I, I, like they will only, like their goal of decentralization is in front of the authorities. That's it. Like if, if they will be tried in court or whatever, Pina, they should be able to argue that it is decentralized. Well, um, yeah, I, I, think don't you... think, I don't think most of these most of these companies, CEOs, whatever, they're actually interested in giving up the power over the protocol that they built. And yeah, this is, I, I think this is what uni is unique with the Excel. Yeah, I, I agree. And maybe I think on-chain governance is going to be different than DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. Um, and so just because that these protocols that live on-chain, like that's where they're going to have to figure out how to interact with um just from a like integration perspective but i don't know how in terms of how what that means in terms of decentralization right like this is what's going on with compound and uniswap right you still have if you don't get the token distribution right then you, you can't really be decentralized even if everything is on chain i mean i mean i, I you have to assume that let's say uni and co have more than 50 percent voting power like, you know, maybe it's hidden or, or whatnot, but they have more than 50% of the tokens. Um, and now they could, like what the line, I, I mean, we're kind of going off on a tangent here, but you know, the line that they're gonna go for is that because there is so much participation because like, you know, a hundred people are voting on each proposal, then, oh, we're decentralized. 
when in reality they have more than 50% of the voting power or whatever, whatever the quorum is. Um, and that it will remain this way. Like it will never actually be community governed. A, a, a proposal that, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Hayden Adams, Hayden Adams, whatever. The, the, so a proposal that Hayden Adams doesn't like will not pass, will never pass. A proposal that Robert Leshner does not like or he doesn't think that should pass will never pass. That's, and I think that's the difference between here. Like a proposal that John doesn't like or that you don't like could actually pass. And I think this has happened before. It has, um, yes. <laughs> so, <and> it, I, <laughs> so this this happens, and I think this is, yeah. Yeah, and anyway. Anyway, so no, <laughs> no, DGov, no DGov index. Is that the... Yeah. But so, it's interesting, I mean, you know, this idea, general, we should be doing, thinking about these things, let's, maybe. Let's do, a, uh, let's do a DXD snapshot vote about it and a, and a signal vote on XDI about, like, should we explore this further? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm guessing this will happen, and there's a chance that, you know, if DXDAO, like, opposes this, we can actually ask them to not include us, right? That's, like, one option. Um, another option is for this to happen and, you know, we don't really treat this and, you know, there's the XD inside it. And, you know, the other extreme is that, okay, this happens and the DXDAO makes a proposal and decides to actually fund this with, I think, what's it? According to the calculation now, it's like a, I don't know, 170 DXD or something. Um, and yeah, I think, or oh, 160. So that's kind of like off the table, I guess. Uh, or we could make a proposal for it. Um, and test the waters. Well, whoever organizes it might just make the proposal to DXDAO on chain. Yeah. yeah. I think the, the snapshot and the XDAO pros is a great idea. I might start a forum post, or someone should start a forum probably before doing that, but yeah. All right, so that's that. I guess that's included, and we'll, we'll like the action item here is, um, yeah, maybe I'll do it. Uh, just for the snapshot and then X die. Um, all right. Any last words on this topic before we move on? Um, all right. So uh, DXDAO ETH 2.0 staking. Um, this is something that, um, I don't know, we have quite a bit of ETH in the treasury and kind of this might go actually to treasury. And I was thinking, um, there are a couple of solutions that allow you to stake ETH without actually having to run the node, like with a pool or something like that. There's like Rocket Pool. There's Stakewise. There is um, uh, there's one. Uh, fuck, what's it called? <laughs> there's another one that I just just slipped my mind. Yo, oh yeah, exactly, Lido. There's Lido, um, and we could be using any of those to actually stake some ETH. Now, I think. Um, like my thoughts with this is this is not, I mean, not necessarily for, for treasury, but just to signal that DXDAO is supporting ETH 2.0 and is actually running uh, or, you know, trying to validate. Um, and yeah, I don't know, any thoughts on this? Do you think we can get some budget, like, I don't know, 100 ETH or, I don't know, multiples of 32 uh, in order to participate in this? Yeah, like we've talked about in the past, this idea of the, the DAO being able to run nodes or do something. We t mainly in the past, we talked about DXL hiring someone who's like got something at stake in order to do it for the DAO. But if we, if there are solutions to do it actually straight from the DAO to one of these services and, and pay and run from there, even if it's only 32 ETH, I think it, to learn how to do that, and as a signal and to support ETH2, I think it's a great idea. And to see if it's possible. Yeah, I think what Sky said. Yeah. Um, all right, so I mean, I, I can create a doubt up post with, I think the three main ones are Stakewise, Lido, and Rocket Pool. Um, do, yeah, do you, do you really think that those services work from like a DAO? Like, I, I don't know how they work exactly, but is there a, is there a very centralized element in, in the process 
that the DAO is basically like effectively hiring a central or giving the money to a centralized service? Or is it is that actually running DXDAO running a node or is that like fake? So I think you would be joining a pool um, and then like we would be putting, let's say our 32 ETH into a pool. Um, yeah, that, that, you know, it's, it's kind of like interacting with their contract that, and their contract stakes on ETH 2.0. Um, so yeah, maybe we can get those guys actually to come speak next week. Sweet. Right. <laughs> yes, and then we are doing some sketchy stuff. <laughs> it seems. Uh, I just saw like the video of, of Gabriel Haynes. I don't know if you guys know him. He's like he just does like reviews, like very very basic reviews for crypto stuff. Um, and then yeah, he did one for Stakewise, and I was like, yeah, why are we not you know, staking some of our ETH? Um, so yeah. All right. So the action item here is yeah. I'll I'll write it out. I'll post about this. Um, any other things to discuss on this topic? Any other thoughts? Should we be staking somewhere else? All right. So I guess we can move to the next topic. Um, do we have any updates on the Aluna Social collaboration? I think there was a post in the forums sometime last week. Uh, not in the forums, in, in the chat. Oh, yeah. I was like, there was a forum post. Um, yeah, not... Uh, well, I guess the update was, uh, I think John and I, I think it was last Wednesday, we had a chat with them, just kind of uh, touch base with them. We had been uh, texting or te on Telegram back and forth, um, but not a whole lot to report, except for we're hoping to get them involved with the swapper farming launch and so um we're as we're kind of testing and figuring things out there once that's finished we'll kind of re-engage them on that as they kind of gear up for their uh farming campaign and making swapper part of that um and then second um is there maybe is some operation uh, co collaboration on the governance front with them uh they basically don't really have any idea of what they want to do in terms of governance right now. So um, maybe this is further down the line after the farming, but helping them um, even maybe incorporating the ERC 20 guild structure that we've, that Augusto has built um, and we're using for Omen, maybe kind of getting them to be built on that or something. Um, but yeah, the next step is just, uh, we're circling back with them on farming once we've uh, tested that. John, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to. I was curious, has anybody used the um, Boost platform? Because apparently Aluna has uh, forked their contracts to do their own farming. And we can compare the contracts to the Boost contracts, but I just wanted to have some proxy to how trustworthy Boost is. Like they claim that they've been used a lot. So I was just curious if anybody in our community is familiar can you send a link like i just started googling it and i didn't find it i don't, know. I don't have a link is it like i googled uh i googled boost farming and there was nothing which isn't that yeah. surprising but i googled boost ethereum and i got like a like a vc for portfolio is boost mainly a uh like an ido platform do we know I thought that I've heard of it. Is that boosted is that? dot finance? Boosted is what he said. Yeah. Hey, like I'm, I'm wondering why. Yeah. I mean, the farming contracts for like sushi are like pretty well. I don't know. Well tr tested, so. Yeah, this has some nuance to it, I think, where the boost token helps you by staking it or, or something. I don't know. There's some interaction with the boost token. <clears throat> Doesn't look that lively. 
That what? That lively. Does the site look like it's... Yeah, it's <laughs> this whole get boosted on the top is kind of <laughs> odd. So, I mean, the concern there, right, is like if we announce like or support this or whatever, they are going to have farming where people can lock their DXD in their contracts. And so I think we should probably do a, a little due diligence <clears throat> on the safety of those contracts. Um, they said they had CERTIC do their audit, which instills z zero <laughs> confidence. Uh, Negative are, confidence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Yeah, I mean, just I did paste a link for followers you follow. That's sometimes an easy way of like getting some legitimacy claim. It seems that there are some people that follow that that are like somewhat widely known, but not like a whole so, lot. So the unique thing about a Luna situation in general is, you know, we have some similarities with them. They seem like they have a good community. They like our community. They want to be decentralized. We have some overlap in product or whatever. Um, we initially they would express interest to be, you know, a user of some of the tools that DXDAO has is building, right? And then it also they also you know IDO platform's not here yet, so they did a private offering, a private sale. Then they're probably going to have a token out there, and they're doing a bunch of farming, and so they they want to do something with DXDAO, and so including DXD token into what they're doing is, is cool. Um, whether like, whether we say it's like an official, you know, partnership or something like that is, is like something we need to decide. And do we tell all DXD holders to go like stake your token and you can, you can earn a Luna token. Um, that's a decision that we need to make. Anyone could say farm with DXD. It's a matter of like, do we, do we tell people, to like that 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 we that, that like we're on board with this right and i think this is separate from whether if they're doing farming on swapper right because that's our those are like our product our contracts we're like very confident with that and we want to like help and i think we'd be happy to tell people to like come farm aluna on on swapper um but and, this, and i think yeah. it would be great for them to use dxd as a t i mean we want that right that's great it's like you people get benefits from it but it's just like yeah what kind of due diligence do we think we should have done before telling people to go ahead and, and do it unless we don't tell people if we just say by the way aluna is doing this you know we have a relationship with them like but have a disclaimer, like it's not our, we don't want to like, it's not our product. Even if it's slightly audited, it still could lose money, right? <laughs> like we, we should t make people aware, like if they tweet this out, like we retweet it and we say, let the DXD community know, but not saying like everyone go put your DXD here. It's more of a soft, a soft, uh, referral well, than a yeah just getting very specific like i don't think we'll do a medium post about the dxd staking we will i think we'll do it about swapper farming because it'll be kind of about swapper farming and i doubt we will do any other yeah i mean like or what other like communication would you think about that we would do for the dxd staking component maybe a tweet or retweet their tweet or something, right? And I think that's like fine, like and say like do your own research or something like that. Like you can give a little bit. We should be alerting. You know, it's fine to alert people that there's an opportunity. There's, of course, there's risk involved, um, but I imagine it'd be something like that rather than like a, a like an announcement. Like how many people here are gonna put DXC to a Farm Aluna token? I probably will. <laughs> I, don't, I won't put all of my DXT, but I probably yeah. yeah. Test it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Unaudited or certificate audited farming contract. It's 
it's you know it's it's, it's a couple of red flags altogether. So well they for so Aluna got the Certic audit and they had forked boosted. I'm not sure where and if boosted got I mean Aluna, I, I mean I trust Aluna, they they're good they're definitely experienced, but yeah, I don't know. We should I just think maybe before we do any announcement, let's just like circle up on on the status of the due diligence because um as an example, though, John, like if we if it was going to cost us ten thousand dollars to audit, look over like their farming contract, is that something DXDAO should be paying for or not? Well, that's something we could do. I mean, we could hire our own audit potentially, but yeah, I don't. Would people want to do that? It seems like that's not our responsibility. Like, nope. but then we can't be promoting it. Right, like if someone says farm, if if Sushi Swap says there's a pool with DXD now, you can earn rewards. It's in the onsen. Like we're we're not going to audit Sushi's contracts, and we're not gonna, we're going to tell people about it, but we're not going to be like, it's not our product, <laughs> right? So it's, it's kind of tricky. I don't think I don't think we should be spending money. Maybe like it'd be awesome if someone could look, like okay, look over it a little bit, but we're not going to like approve it, right? Do your own research, I guess, is the answer, you're right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you know, if if we if DXD endorses something and then it gets hacked, like if DXD endorses something and then it gets hacked, then it's yeah, it's it's not going to show good for us, even if we say you know do your own research, um, and then <laughs> on the other side of this, like I don't think there's anything as bad publicity, so. People could whine about Deke style recommending something, and it's just going to give publicity to Deke style at the end of the day. Um, yeah, all right. So the decision on this is, I guess, I guess this moves forward, and we will decide as it moves forward, like what level of engagement we're going to give this. Yeah, I mean, I think there's. Two different things here. There's a there's swapper farming, which we'll do like an announcement on because that's swapper farming, and then we will probably do some type of tweet retweet. And for that, we need to have a certain level of due diligence um, on the contracts. Yeah. All right. Um. Anything else on this? All right, I guess the last thing we're talking about um, is the Opolis DX Ventures investment. Um, I followed up with John from Opolis about, um, um, yeah, the tokenomics update that they said that they will give. Um, and yeah, he just replied that, you know, they're gonna have something today um, with like the tokenomics. He just says it's like on the designer front. Um, yeah, like what are the thoughts so far? I know Martin, like Marty kind of did an analysis of, yeah, here's the Martin's mini report. Um, but welcome, I Martin. Can, <laughs> I can add a few words. So, yeah, go for it. Yeah, in a way, I, I'm also new to this valuation stuff because I used to evaluate some token, but I'm not used to evaluate like pre investments. So uh, one one thing I did, I asked Christopher, but he maybe take take. He, he told me he will have some time this week, and I don't know if sh if I should ping him again, because I think he did many evaluation of this kind. I'm personally, I, I I think it's a little bit strange the tokenomics because in a way, um, as investor you get tokens, but you don't get any government's rights because it's one person one vote in a way so the members are the the people who can vote and it's very unsharply described in the paper it's somewhere it's one person one vote but then if you are a member and a member means you are like using the services you can somehow amplify your um your vote but it's not described very well so 
the big question for me is uh, they generate a lot of tokens because they don't have a cap. So if you have a sell, if you if you are a member and they process salary for you, they do something like a, they call it, I think, salary mining, something like this. So they give you a token for, for this and they have a quite a huge um, um generate a lot of token at the end. And uh, then you get diluted, I, I guess, so as a, as an investor. So I don't see any mechanism in the write-ups or tokenomics or pitch deck which absorbs the token. I, I didn't see anything. So it's not described that you can buy services with the token. So I don't know. I, I don't get tokenomics finally, you know, in a way, because it's only how you distribute token, but not how you absorb token. And the second thing is, and I think I we, we should ask them too, is we don't know how much token they already sold to other investors. And I think if you are investing at this stage, you have the right to um, to get information about this. Because if someone has a very low entry than you, then he's selling much earlier than you, and then yeah, you lose you lose an opportunity in a way. And also, I, I, also this multiplayer thing, I don't know if this really, for me, it sounds very multi, how is it called? Multi, multi-level marketing stuff, kind of, because if you invest 250,000, you get a five multiplier. So, and if you invest like 50,000, you get a, a single multiplier. So this means, so if you invest, if you invest like 50,000, then we get one token for one dollar. But if you invest or somebody invests um, a quarter of a million, then you get like uh, um, it, it's forty cent. So if somebody is investing with with a field for um, quarter million, then he gets a very much more cheaper price than we do if we only invest little money and. Maybe this this is normal. I can't. I don't know. But so this is one side. This is about the tokenomics. I'm not sure. I think other people have to look at it too, and and have we need like another opinion than mine. I think it's weak in a way. And the other thing, this and in a way we also think we don't get get any governments right. And this I think is a little bit strange because yeah, it's strange. It's an investment. The only thing you get is if they make revenues. They distribute the revenue to token holders. This is yeah, if they have any any point they, they get revenue, then they distribute it to the token holders back. And the other thing is this is only like the investment side, and the other discussion I think we have we have to discuss is much more, even if we invest, are there any use for us as a DXAO? Are they near to us? Can we provide them like tools? Because in a way, it's the idea that people who invest also uh, then are like present in the tool chain. And I don't see that so much right now. But yeah. Or maybe read it again and judge for yourself. I think it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Martin, I, I, Martin, thanks for your your recap that you sent around because I, that's really helpful. Um, there are like these weird token economic ish outlying issues and until which nylon has asked for and they should be sending today until they everyone's probably has these same questions so they, they have to answer these and they have to be good answers and it, yeah it just seems like if you're investing in this early stage you should be getting tokens at a much lower price a much better deal if there's going to be 600 million tokens or whatever um so like it's from, from a token problem, it's bad. And then the other question is, yeah, is this the type of investment that DX Ventures is looking to do? It's very narrow, it's just US, it's not global. DXDAO is very global. It is a, It will probably be a useful tool if it succeeds in five or 10 years, but that's a long way away. So it might not be the exact type of investment, especially like the first one that DX Ventures is looking for. Um, maybe we want some users using it First, like if we're not if we're not using it, like we're gonna be using radical hopefully very soon, right? If we're not using 
if there's only like one or two people maybe trying it or just starting to use it, that may not be something that's like that relevant to DXDAO. On the other, on the other side, it could be a tool that like everyone in the Web3 space and DAO space is going to need. But then even if it is, the token me, me might be. I, I think the, the product they got is, is, is good and and in a way, I like the focus on the on the on the members in a way. You know, they're very member focused in the end. So I think they may have success. But I think another story is also how what's what's our time of investment? And I don't know if if we talked about this already. So are we long term investors or are we just trying to speculate on, on stuff or this is like, yeah, unsolved or yeah, maybe there was a decision at some time and I, I missed it. But. Yeah, we never discussed like an actual time investment time horizon. Um, but I would guess that we're thinking that the down in general should be thinking rather long term. Like, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think there's a plan to sell the tokens in the next few years. Really, yeah. we want to use the product and grow the ecosystem if, we, if we invest in it, I think. Did you apply, Sky? Or? Yeah, so I, I signed up and I'm gonna st I'm starting to use it as, a, as an individual in the US, um, but I just, I haven't like <laughs> just signed up like so. So I'm onboarded, but I, I can't, I don't have much feedback. So, and the thing is like in a couple months, let's say we had a couple workers trying it out, like I'd be able to give feedback in a couple months, but that's probably too late for this investment. And then yes. a future investments probably miss the boat. I don't think there's going to be a future opportunity. But, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I want to say something. This is, I guess this is relevant for now because we're in a bull market, but you know, the token, like let's say in the case of Uniswap, it's supposed to be like a voting voting power, but you know, people are not really buying it to vote. They're speculating on how well Uniswap is going to do. Um, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I thought everyone wants to be part of the DAO. <laughs> um, so I think this is like, like, like the price of the token is gonna move with how successful the product is. Um, unrelated to like, you know, the to tokenomics might be broken, right? Uh, but yes. the price of the token will move like according to how many people are using it, how much hype there is around it, how much, how many memes this thing, how many original memes this thing is producing. Um, and, and yeah, but, but this is just Nylon, at the same time, like at $2 a token, and I think it's 600 million tokens total supply, that's $1.2 billion fully diluted valuation for a for a project this early to be an investor in that, that no i don't think that's not very that's not like what vcs would do so yeah it just seems overly yeah we, and we have a recent comparable there right like i mean radical they're doing very well right like i think they're fully by diluted valuations a couple it's billion high. now yes yes it's very high um and that's and you know that's with great, like, you know, VCs that obviously they got in a lot lower than the current valuation, right? So, like, if we're getting in at a billion, that seems kind of crazy. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, the price, the Uniswap is, in, in a way, it's a good, good example. But this also means the price will be much lower again if the hype is over. So, I think this is the, but, 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 I would do as a personal invest. I would maybe invest, but then if the price shooting up because of the fuss or because it's it's a renewed project, I will I would sell part of it to get my investment back, basically. And the question is, do we as a DXL do we this kind of thing or don't we? Because we are then a little bit irrational. Because rational would be yeah, take your investment back, you know. If it blows up, you yeah. you sell part of it, and then you have investment back, and then the rest you, you keep it. But in a way, we don't have any treasury management right now, and maybe we won't have. So maybe we are even not able to 
because we, we are too slow or we don't want to. We, we should have an exit strategy, yeah. probably, probably, like when we invest in something. Um, so this could be like, if it goes 150%, we sell 50% of our holding, for example. Um, yeah. So uh, in, uh, can I just raise a concern I'm having in general that this was not thought about too much earlier, but DX Ventures was is this idea that we it fits in well with like kind of what we were already kind of doing, but we weren't doing it very formally. My concern is that, and we can talk about this, just to have to have it on the open. My concern is we now have this formal program. And if we, like, you could literally spend like, five people all week long running dx ventures like a vc talking about this investment and that investment and all this stuff and at this point we don't have the resources to like have this many people thinking about each investment this detail like i'm concerned that it's taking away from what people probably could devote their resources to I don't know if, what other people think about that, but I don't have an answer for it. But I like, I, yeah, you can't I think the investment, like, it's a problem, I think, right? I think across the board, we need to be willing to wait for when the stars are aligned. And that's like for investments, that's for like big moves we make, like products, that's for like even like hiring, right? Like, there's going to be a lot of noise and kind of like opportunities, like even some good opportunities. But like we, and this is, applies, I think, very specifically to DX Ventures. Like we just have to be confident and wait for the one that like perfectly aligns. And with like Opolis here, it's like, oh, there's some alignment on what they're doing. Like there's some ability for like DX Down members maybe to contribute. Um, that's like one, but I think we're missing like three or four other places that kind of like perfectly align with it i think like for instance like where we're at in the cycle doesn't really make sense because i, I feel like maybe if it was a little bit earlier we could get in, in here um i think that the tokenomics is as, as martin said so like i don't know if it makes sense here but like we just have to have like really high standards and be okay with like saying no yeah if we're not so there's like a a logic that says like if you don't if you're not like fuck yeah this is amazing then it's probably not good right so we at this point until they give us some really good answers to the or the new token economics we should probably just put it on the side and it's not right for, this one's not right for us like but you're right like everyone should be like that's amazing opportunity that's a great deal that's an amazing product let's see these guys let's give this little team of two that's building this awesome project like 20 grand and let them like build it for the next 6 months right like we can do that easily we can't do like maybe these major things when like there's all this competition but it's also a tough cycle time because it's gonna be very competitive like if we say no they're gonna be like oh no problem we'll, we'll just take money from anyone else that will give it to us like it's not a big deal right which is good right because if they end up solving our problems and and we didn't have to fund them and we didn't get a bad deal then it's all good right like True. but i think that's True. the filter that we should apply is it like is it solving our problems we shouldn't be running it like a venture firm and like sending people out and like filtering yeah. through too many deals it should really be like you know the thesis is because we're kind of on the cutting edge of like the future of work if you want to use like some of the brand terms right is that we should be like experiencing these pains and when we find something that actually solves our pain like and there's an opportunity to invest then we should move like um like radical speaks to that really well we didn't really get the opportunity to invest there but it would have been a hell yes like i think tenderly not directly related to governance but that would be a hell yes for me like it solves huge problems um yeah, yeah i think both of those yeah. could have if we had like this dx ventures idea or we were like kind of doing this, like kind of a little bit of due diligence we're doing now. If we had that six months ago, maybe radical and tenderly, we could have taken advantage of, right? So it's like having some of the structure saying no a lot and like waiting for like, you know, to strike perfectly. And I thought like, I thought this process actually went, I mean, I don't know where we'll end up here with Opolis, but it sounds like we're, you know, going in a certain direction. I think like this process worked pretty well. Like I thought Martin's analysis was, uh, was was good. Like we kind of talked about this, like not that much. John came on the a call, and we've had like a couple weeks of this. 
Um, so I don't know. I think we're learning. Yeah. So I think maybe it kind of like if we're talking about the, the investment thesis, I think, um, and I'll correct me if I'm wrong, but kind of like what's coming out of this is that um, products that can solve our problems, products that are at the bleeding edge of technology, this is what we want to invest. And this is like this value is it trumps the value of ROI probably as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, at, guess, the, at, the, at, the, sorry, at the same time, um, like as Martin's saying, DXDAO is going to get access to deals like Opolis that we as people wouldn't get deals. We, we're not going to get, we don't have that opportunity, right? There's like a really good chance over the next three years that ends up being a successful product and a good investment. Um, and we could, we could, I mean, you can. We have room to spread across a lots of different bets, right? Like, if it's fifty grand, we're getting the bad the token economics, I guess. But the DXL could make a lot of money from that. Actually, like, we can we could triple our money potentially. Um, I'm not and, sure. I know the main concern is that they really generate a lot of token, but yeah. maybe they will they will change it. You know, my my um, experience in this space is that. Yeah, everyone gets token and think it's 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 fun and nice, and then they start to change the tokenomics because they want the token to accrue value. Most of the projects do it, you know. They say we are farming like this, and then oh no, uh, we change it so we farm less. We make some yeah, that's what I see. And maybe they go the same way, you know. They see okay now we have a lot of tokens and people have these tokens and they don't know what to do with it finally because. They will also get voter fatigue. People don't. Also, if they reach, I think they need like a thousand people until they will go full down in a way. But they have voter, fat voter fatigue too. So people won't vote. And they, they, you can stake the token then. And we as an investor can stake too. So you get also a share of the tokens they generate in the future. But yeah, it's just. I'm not convinced of the tokenomics. And this is a little bit strange. Even if there's some alignment or high alignment, they 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 solve like a, a pain point of, of of us of as a DAO a little bit or some of it for the US car people. But the tokenomics it's not yeah, not convincing. I think it's strange because if the if if the tokenomics is convincing, I would invest because product is good, you may we have some connection and the tokenomics is okay. So yeah, why not? But the tokenomics for me, it's the weak point. What do we see? Uh, all right. Um, so to recap that, the main concerns are token economics and the valuation that we'd be in. For me, right? yes, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, for all those yeah, so let's see how they address this. Um, yeah, like, I mean, like, like a thought is, you know, John, what you were saying is, you know, if this, or, or uh, sorry, Chris said it, like if the stars are aligned, right? So if the stars are aligned, we want, might want to invest, you know, 500K, but if the stars are not really aligned, we might want to invest only 100K or something like that. Um, so, I mean, these are our options, like. Because if, if there's something that, you know, we really believe in and it's super awesome, then, you know, we want, we want to invest more in it. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like my thoughts. And, yeah, if, if I'm like trying to sum up the, like the, the thesis is that we're looking to invest in things that will benefit us and that will push decentralization. That's the core. That, that's the main narrative. I think this is great because I think this will attract people who are actually interested in, in yeah, yeah. we could even put that into some sort of like short document, you know, I think that might be helpful to frame the conversation when uh, we do make further contact with uh, organizations. The other thing I think we could do to formalize it, it would be to like call out specific like pain points that we know exist that we're looking for solutions for. Like if, um, 
Like as an example of that, I like I feel like our treasury management, like something that like could help, like I think of it as like a wire for like Dow treasuries or like uh, the fidelity of DAOs, right? Like there's something that's like conservative, uh, but like like manages assets um, that could be really helpful for us. And I don't know if that really exists out there, but like I think Christopher from One KX mentioned some project that was um, I, I don't know if they're public yet, but he he was like, oh, like there's we're talking to one like that so if we put it out there like look we know this is a problem we're looking for people who are solving this like that might help um bring things to our attention yeah in a way to add it's i think it's difficult this is maybe a better way to invest because then we can see but it needs a lot of resources too because then if we have this pain point we can look what's the market who is there and then we can actively go to people and ask them for investment in a way. And then we, I think we will have much more closer, maybe things closer to us if we have, go with this strategy, because now it's more that, I don't know where Opelis came from, but they, they just came to us because we are down and not we are reaching out to them. And this is, I think, a very different process. Yeah, I think being proactive could be a great way to do it. Because I mean, if they're uh, like an exciting project, chances are they're not actively out there like seeking, you know, especially in this kind of capital environment. Um, but we you also see, you know, as long as it's really decentralized and without any um, connection to a to a local law like like Opolis, then it's, maybe it's even it's easier, you know, for us because Opolis really U.S. based. US law based and of course US is a big market but it doesn't most of the members I guess right now more than the half are outside of the US so it's better to have product who serves like something for the DAO on for everyone in a way yeah okay so we wait I guess we wait till we come back hopefully yeah all right, uh, I think that's it for me. Are there any other comments, thoughts? No. So see. Alrighty. So. All right. Stop the recording and yeah.